Okay, so starting off with the first one, at number 10, we have animation. This one blew my mind. So animation is considered to be a modern technology that has advanced a lot within the last century. But it actually dates back to ancient Persia. A 5,200 year old goblet was discovered in the burnt city. You can see a series of drawings of a goat jumping and eating leaves from a tree. Sequences of this image were also found in other goblets in medieval Islamic Persia. And this piece of art was discovered by an Italian archaeologist from a burial site in Persia. And next up we have the battery. A battery was discovered that was made out of a ceramic pot and some metal. And the battery is known as the Parthion battery. The the battery was tested by Western scientists and they noticed that when the battery jar was filled with vinegar or some other type of electrolyte, it generated a current of 1.5 to 2 volts. And this predates the invention of the electric battery by Alessandro Volta of Italy in the 1800s. Next up we have human rights. So this thing right here, the Cyrus Cylinder, it's recognized as the world's first universal charter of human rights. It's been dated back to 534 BCE. and the Cyrus cylinder is made from clay with Akkadian cuneiform script and it was discovered in the ancient area of Babylon in 1879 which is in Iraq and it's now kept in the British Museum in London. Do you know that Persians also invented the postal service? Chapar Kane is the Persian term for the first postal service and it was used during the Achaemenid Empire. It was created by Cyrus the Great and later developed further by Darius the Great as a method of communication throughout the Persian lands. The system comprised of a series of stations along a 2,500 meter highway throughout the empire where the Chapars would ride horseback to be delivered from one area to another area in the kingdom. This one's another mind-blowing one. There's also the Yakchal which is a refrigerator. So the Yakchal is an ancient evaporation cooler. So this thing is pretty awesome. The words Yak means ice and Chal means pit. These refrigerators were mainly built and used in Persia and the Persians had mastered the technique of building and using the Yakchal by 400 BC. The structure above the ground was dome shaped and had a subterranean storage space. The underground spaces were up to 5,000 cubic meters in volume and many of these are still standing today. Cold air entered the structure through the base. The cone shape of the Yakchal made the remaining heat flow upwards and out which caused the inside to remain cooler than the outside temperatures. The ice was created in the winter and it was stored in the Yakchal for the summer. The Persians were just brilliant. Also, algebra has its roots in ancient Persia. Muhammad bin Musa al Khwarizmi was a Persian scholar who lived from 750 to 850 AD. His work spanned from mathematics, astronomy, geography, and today he's best known for his method through which he taught algebra as an independent science. And this is why he is known as the founding father of algebra. Then there's also sulfuric acid. Abu Bakr Muhammad al Razi, he was a Persian astronomer astronomer, geographer, and mathematician, and he discovered sulfuric acid, also known as vitriol. It formed the basis for chemical engineering in the modern chemistry, and sulfuric acid is used in many things like fertilizers, detergents, and a bunch of other stuff. There's also the use of the alphabet. During the mid-6th century BC, the Persian Empire of the Achaemenid dynasty rose to supremacy, and it spread across Mesopotamia as well as Afghanistan. The old Persian language developed developed during the early history of this dynasty and Old Persian is classified as a syllabic script and many sounds began to be spelled with a combination of characters rather than having its own unique symbol. Later on, a more recent Persian language known as Pre-Middle Persian was used. The earliest version of the modern guitar exists in the form of the tar or lute. Of course now the guitar is one of the most popular and widely used musical instruments in the world and the Persian type of guitar was made using a wooden box and some strings and it was invented at the time when musical instruments were a very rare thing to own. And the final discovery and invention I want to share with you is the water supply system known as Kanat. In the early days of the Persian civilization, 
a very well designed and managed water supply system existed and it still exists today. The canal was an underground channel that was used to carry water from the water well to fields as well as houses and its origins can be traced back to the first millennia BC and the tunnels that made up the canal were several kilometers long and were actually dug by hand. So starting at number 10 we have alcohol. Yeah a lot of you commented in part one saying hey you forgot alcohol. I didn't forget alcohol. I just didn't put it in the video because I can only fit 10 in. Anyway, so alcohol no doubt is one of the most used products in the entire world. But did you know that it was first invented by a Persian doctor named Mohammed bin Zakaria Al Razi. He had been working on different gases and chemicals and invented alcohol. As time went on, the form of alcohol was modified and also simplified by other people. In at number 9 there is hookah. So the Persian also invented hookah and you see this thing right here yeah this device here it's like there's a pipe that's used for smoking and vaporizing and there are all sorts of flavors that you can smoke there are different types of hookah as well with their own unique features the water is used for vaporizing the pipes are used for smoking and the base is used for the flavoring and this is used for hundreds of years hookah was later used and developed in a better form and used in other regions of the world. And do you know the game Backgammon? Well, I've never played it before, but it's always fascinated me growing up. Backgammon is a board game that was created in Iran, and it's a two-player game. Each player has 15 chunker pieces that move between 24 points, and movements are based on rolling two dice. The objective of the game is to be the first to remove all the 15 chunkers off of the board, and Backgammon also influenced games like chess. But backgammon isn't the only game in this episode invented by the Persians. We also have polo. This game was first created in Persia in 600 BC and it was known as Chogan. The game was originally used as practice for the army in the Achaemenid Empire, but it really became popular in the Parthian era. From there it turned into a worldwide sport during the Sassanid Empire. In ancient Persia, Chogan had two types. There was one without the horse so that children could play it and there's another version with horses for teens, young adults, whatever. And of course playing it on horseback was just so much more fun. Kerosene lamps come in at number 6. So a kerosene lamp also known as a paraffin lamp in some countries is a type of lamp that uses kerosene as fuel just like the name implies. Kerosene lamps have a wick or mantle as the light source covered by glass and like oil lamps these come in handy for keeping your place well lit during a power outage. They are often brought on camping trips as well as a backup for battery powered flashlights. The first description of a simple lamp using crude mineral oil was provided by the Persian alchemist Al Razi in the 9th century Baghdad who referred to it as the Nafata in his Kitab Al Asrar known as the Book of Secrets. Okay, Grab is at number 5. A grab is a mechanical device with two or more jaws and grabs can be used for things like dredging, loading and unloading ships and salvaging. The mechanical grab, specifically the clamshell grab, was invented by the Persian Banu Musa brothers and described in their book of ingenious devices in the 9th century. The grab described by the Banu Musa brothers was used to remove objects from underwater and recover things in other bodies of water. The wind tower comes in at number 4. A wind tower aka a wind catcher is an Iranian structure used to create natural ventilation in buildings. There are very types of wind catchers. There are the unidirectional ones, the two directional ones, as well as the multi-directional ones. They were used in ancient Iranian architecture and you can still find wind catchers in Iran today as well as in Persian inspired architecture in places like Pakistan and Afghanistan. Here we also have the Panamon windmill. So a Panamon windmill is a type of wind turbine and it has a vertical rotating axis with horizontal wind catching blades. The earliest known windmill device was made by the Persians and it was in the Panamon design. When the wind blew, the windmill turned and there would normally be a grain grinder attached to it or some other type of device. Now the earliest recorded windmill design was found in Persia and it's believed to have been invented between 700 and 900 AD. Wind 
powered machines may have been known earlier, but there's really no clear evidence of windmills prior to that time period. At number two, we have the Book of Healing and the Canon of Medicine. Abu Ali bin Sina was a Persian physician, astronomer, and a philosopher of the Islamic Golden Age. Now, when he was only 18 years old, he started to record his most important works, including an encyclopedia of medicine, the Book of Healing, and the Canon of Medicine. Now, the Canon of Medicine was considered an authority in the medical world for centuries. It set the standards for medicine in medieval Europe and the Islamic world and was used as a textbook throughout the 18th century in Europe. And it also actually still is used in Unani medicine, which is a form of medicine practice over in India. And finally, at number one, we have Zoroastrianism. This year is considered by many to be the world's oldest monotheistic religion and it was founded by the prophet Zarathustra over 3,500 years ago in the city of Yaz, which is now in Iran. It's estimated that there are about 200,000 Zoroastrians today, and Zoroastrians worship a god called Ahura Mazda and believe that fire is an element that represents the light and wisdom of this god. Zoroastrianism also influenced the Abrahamic religions, and it was the official religion of several areas of Persia until the 7th century AD, after which Islam became the dominant religion in that area. Alright, let's get straight into it. At number 10, we have the history. Iran goes way back. I mean like way back to the ancient Persian Empire. Persians have one of the oldest cultures in the entire world and Persia was once a dominant world power. Iran is also the birthplace of the Cyrus Cylinder and it's recognized as the world's first charter of human rights. And of course Persians had great leaders such as Cyrus the Great, King Darius, as well as Xerxes. Moving on now to number 9, we have the Yakchal. So check these things out. The Yakchal is an ancient evaporation cooler which has two meanings. So the term yak means ice and chal means pit. So ice pit. Now these ancient refrigerators, they were mainly built and used in Persia, and of course Persia is Iran, but the Persians had mastered this technique of building these things by 400 BC. And now the structure above the ground was a dome shape and it had a subterranean storage space below, and the cone shape allowed the heat to flow up and out which caused the inside of the structure to remain cool even when the outside temperatures were a lot warmer. Now the next thing Iran is known for is the Kanat. Now a Kanat is an underground channel that carries water to houses as well as fields and it's used for irrigation of crops as well as you know drinking water as well. It was first developed by the Persians back around the first millennia BC and the Kanat tunnels which were about several kilometers long were actually dug by hand. That's a lot of time a lot of dedication because you're digging by hand several kilometers. Now these structures they were built with great scientific vision and it allowed the Persian people to survive during long dry periods without surface water. And of course the use of the Kanat spread to different parts of the world and you can still find them that they're active. You can find them in countries like China and Morocco as well as other places. There's also some modern successes that Iran is known for. So the Uber CEO Dara Khosrowshahi, eBay founder Pierre Omidyar, and a former director at NASA, Farooz Naderi are just a few names among the list of Iranians who are accomplished in business, science, and I stress science, as well as design and the entertainment industry. Some sources say that Iranian Americans are among the most highly educated in the United States, and with many of them, of course, in the field of technology, and they've gained a lot of traction, especially in Silicon Valley. Iran is also known for its architecture. So, Iran has a rich culture as well as beautiful nature. And when we combine that with the architecture, you know, it's just completely breathtaking. Whether it's the Grand Mosque or lavish palaces, amazing rooftops, or ancient roadside structures, I mean, Iran's got it all. It has a lot of impressive historical buildings that tourists and locals are completely amazed at. Halfway in at number five, we have the Imam Reza Shrine, known best as a place of religious pilgrimage. And this is located in the city of Mashhad. Mashhad is a 
second most populous city in Iran and it's a home to the tomb of Imam Reza, the eighth Shia Imam. The Imam Reza shrine complex, also known as the Haram i Razavi, is actually the longest mosque in the entire world in terms of dimension. It's 600 meters square. It's a sacred place for Iran's majority Shia Muslim population and it's something that they're very, very proud of. Number four brings us Zoroastrianism. I know quite a bit of you have asked us to do a video about Zoroastrianism. So yeah, maybe that might be coming soon. Anyways, Zoroastrianism is one of the world's oldest continuously practiced religions. Zoroaster was an ancient Iranian spiritual leader who founded this religion and his teachings really challenged existing traditions of the Indo-Aryan religion and brought in a big movement that eventually became a dominant religion in ancient Persia. And this was way before Islam became the dominant religion. Iran is also known for the Persian cats. So check this out. Also known as the Persian long hair or the Shirazi cat among other names. Now back in 2008, the Persian Persian cat was the most popular breed of pedigree cats in the United States. Now over in the UK, registration numbers had actually died down since the early 1990s and the Persian cat really lost its top spot. But as of the year 2012, it was the sixth most popular breed behind the British short hair, ragdoll, the Siamese, as well as some other breeds. Now over in France, the Persian cat is the only breed whose registration declined between 2003 and 2007. And then fast forward to 2015, it was ranked as the second most popular breed in the United States, according to the cat family. Fanciers Association. So yeah, the cat is very popular in many different countries. Iran is also known for its tea. Like, oh my god, in Iran, tea is like the most common drink ever. You'll find it everywhere and it's simply known as chai. It's made in various different ways and it's really gained a lot of popularity, especially in the United States. And like I mentioned, there's many different ways that you can make it. There's a ton of different styles such as the cashmere chai that's smooth and milky and you can even add pistachios in it. And then there's Pani Kam, and that's a very strong drink. So needless to say, if you have some Iranian chai or tea, whatever name you want to use for it, you're going to have a whole orchestra, a whole theater production up in your mouth. And finally, Iran is known for its Persian rugs. So today, carpet weaving is by far the most widespread handicraft in the entire country. Persian carpets are known all around the world for their rich colors, as well as they have a wide variety of patterns and designs, and the quality in them, it's like, mm, impeccable. Persian carpets are among the most treasured possessions. Like really, when people go to Iran, getting a Persian rug is like the greatest souvenir that you could ever get. Um, now the art of carpet weaving in Iran actually goes way back to 2,500 years. So they've had a lot of practice in developing this craft. That's why they're so good at it. So starting off at number 10, we have alcohol. Alcohol, yeah, that's illegal in Iran. And you know, this may be a surprising thing for tourists because alcohol consumption is such a common thing in majority of societies in our world. However, it's been forbidden for Muslims in Iran since the year 1979 when the revolution happened and it was instituted by the government. Now in Islam, whatever harms a human being is prohibited and alcohol consumption as well as any form of intoxicant is not allowed to be produced or consumed. However, despite the ban on alcohol for Muslims, non-Muslims are permitted to produce alcohol for their consumption, but in a limited way. And alcohol is just one thing that's banned from being sold and produced and distributed in Iran. But I'm gonna get into some other things. Number nine, we have public dancing. So is dancing really illegal in Iran? Yeah, although dancing has been a part of Persian history and tradition, Islamic law in Iran says public dancing is illegal. Now on top of that, there's strict dance laws that are based on individuals' gender and women are not allowed to dance in the presence of men not being their immediate family members. Even making videos including Iranian women who are dancing and sharing it on the internet is also seen as a crime. There's also certain music that illegal. And now this is determined by the marja, meaning the source to follow or religious reference. And that's a title given to the highest level of Yusuli Shia authority. Muslims believe some musical sounds and instruments are harmful to the soul, especially music that is made to be performed with dancing. So Iran's official media has been forbidden to broadcast these kinds of music and music videos. No. 
You're not going to find that in Iran. Now, here's another surprising one: dog walking. So, in many countries, having a dog is just common, and it's probably one of the most popular pets for people to have. Although Iranian people know that the government has made keeping dogs illegal in Iran, you can still see dogs roaming down the street. However, the thing to keep in mind is that keeping dogs at home and walking dogs in public places are forbidden, and it's actually punishable. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. May you just want to keep those dogs out in the wild. Get another pet, Persian cats. Those are cute. Zumba is also illegal. So similar to number nine, the government considers Zumba illegal in Iran. Zumba is a type of aerobic exercise that mixes dance movements into it. Zumba classes have been banned in all shapes and form in Iran since 2017, and the government's authority declares Zumba classes as contrary to Islamic ideology. Halfway to number five, we have tattoos. Now, why are tattoos illegal in Iran? Well, most Iranians consider tattooing as an anti-value act based on their culture. However, it's only forbidden in particular conditions. So tattoos which contain obscene or any form of offensive or nasty imagery on certain visible parts of the body like your face, your hands, your arms, it's actually a legal and a punishable offense. VPNs come in at number four and that stands for virtual private networks. So virtual private networks pretty much unblock content and improve privacy. So they have become increasingly popular around the world. And you know, in Iran, signing up with a VPN provider registered and approved by the government is actually 100% legal. However, the main reason that people use VPNs anyways is to access websites that are blocked by the government. So chances are that the VPNs that they use anyways will be ones that are illegal. Then next up, we have neckties at number three. Publicly wearing neckties is effectively banned in Iran. Now, there's no written law against wearing wearing ties, but they are looked down on under Iran's strict Islamic dress code. Shop owners, they tend to sell them under the counter though. And the former president of Iran, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, he angered senior clerics in 2010 when he said it was acceptable for men to wear ties. Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, he wore open neck shirts and Ayatollah Ahmad Khatami claimed at the time that the supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei had issued a fatwa or a religious edict against wearing straight ties or bow ties. So the whole bunch of controversy and stuff happening with the ties so just don't wear it I guess ponytails it's also something that is banned so Iran's cultural ministry in 2010 published a list of approved hairstyles in order to get rid of Western hairstyles that are influencing the country so ponytails mullets and other long hairstyles all got clamped down on however the 1980s style Elvis, you know that Elvis pompadour style? That's 100% accepted in the country. There's literally like a whole list of hairstyles. Like you can actually check this out to see what's legal and what's not. And finally, number one, we have public affection. Any touching between men and women who are not family members is absolutely forbidden. Even a handshake can actually be punishable and is called an illegitimate sexual relationship short of adultery. And this is what a woman by the name of Atina Fargandani, who was 20 at the time, found out. Atina Fargandani was sent to 12 and a half years in jail for drawing a political cartoon and was then charged with indecency for shaking her lawyer's hand when he came to visit her in jail. However though, she was freed one year later. <laughs>